and today we're talking growing strawberries. Welcome to the Road by Road Gardening Show, the best dead gum gardening show on the internet where we talk about gardening, a little bit of cooking, and growing your own food. Now sit back and enjoy. Hey, I'm Greg. I'm Sheila. Man, it's that time of year, fall of the year, where we love fall gardening. And sweater just, weather. Sweater weather. I just pulled my coat off. I did have it on earlier today. But it's that time of the year where we're talking brassicas, fall plant, and then we mix some exciting things in there like strawberries and onions and garlic. The earth keeps on giving. Mm -hmm. yep. Love this time of year. Yep. Oh, man. So we're going to be talking strawberries today. We're going to be talking maybe a little bit different, especially for you guys out there that may not have a big garden that you can plant strawberries. We're going to maybe give you some insights on how you too can enjoy growing strawberries and enjoy the harvest as well. But in how's, the meantime, how's your garden? My garden's doing pretty good. Pretty good. A lot of people are stressing on a row by row Facebook group about the cold weather coming in. Mm -hmm. And yes, we do have some of those crops lingering into the fall. It mm -hmm. seems to be we're going to have an earlier cool snap than we normally do. This is one of them. Yep, Roselle. Roselle. You see the little buds there? If it was to come a frost. Uh, I think, think you may be out with a frost. A freeze would be detrimental. I need about two more good weeks. Mm -hmm. yep. They're loaded. Yep. Loaded. Yep. And I even planted these early, early, hoping to avoid this. Mm -hmm. I planted these back in February. Yep. You said it was way too early. Well... I was wrong. Yeah. So a lot of people's complaining about fall corn. My fall corn is actually right there at the making stage, so I'm going to be okay. Corn will take a good bit of cold weather. Really? Yeah, corn's pretty good about that. As long as it don't freeze? Uh, as long as it don't freeze, I think we'll all be okay. Uh, now, the growth is going to slow down. It's going to be a lot slower maturing mm -hmm. with these cool nights. But I think we're going to be okay. Ours is about a, oh, maybe... Three or four days from harvest. You see those brown tops right there? Look at that one, though. Yep. yep. This one's even... Well, now, that one I pulled the other day wasn't completely brown. It was not, but it was... But very... it was ready. Yeah, it's close. But look at this. That's yep. ready. Yeah, that was ready. So we're right here at corn harvest time, and I'm not sweating the cold weather. I think we're going to be okay. Uh, tomatoes may get mm, burnt back just a little bit. There's not a whole lot of I'm not going to go... What we're going to be, what's in the high, where's our low going to be? 36. 36. We may get a frost. I'm not going to cover anything up at that. Uh, and of course, you people that's worried about garlic, don't worry about garlic whatsoever. Uh -uh. Strawberries is going to be fine. All that will be wonderful. That's ambrosia, folks. Delicious. Mm, while you eat that, mm -hmm. let me talk about what I've been doing this week. So I got a new... Get gadget in, would you say gadget? Mm -hmm. An electric pressure canner, early anniversary present, <laughs> Christmas I present <laughs> to myself. Um, so I canned with the electric pressure canner, um, twice already the zipper peas that we had last week on the show, mm -hmm. and a little bit of a learning curve, but I really like it. You've always froze them in the past. Right, I froze in the past. Um, but that corn's good, but it sure makes a mess on me. You can kind of walk away once you get to a certain after it vents and forget it. It just does everything automatic. So these people out there that are really stressed about their pressure can and blowing up, this is the answer to that. I would I would think so. Um, I'm gonna do a video on it and give a review on it. Uh did some dill pickles with all those mm -hmm. cucumbers from last week Now this you only had to water bath but now the electric pressure canner will do water bath too and then look at that pretty stuff <laughs> you don't think it's pretty it is pretty I, I just reminded me of a story i may tell about this right here uh, yeah i got a story too yeah so um Chopping bits. Was chopping it? bits were two cooney cooney pigs. We had last year. So I've been saving the fat off of it and I rendered some lard thanks to four kids in a farm telling me how to do it. But it turned out so pretty. That's going to be good in some biscuits. Mm -hmm. yep. Good in some biscuits. Yep. Nice and clean and white. 
So, uh, remind me of a story a few years ago. We were in Germany visiting some family there. <laughs> and uh, they were working, so we was kind of on our own. And in Germany, they have these little villages that reminds you back the way it used to be here years and years ago. So every little village, I'm not going to say every little village, the village we were in was just picturesque. It was beautiful downtown, and they had all these little shops. So they had the bakery, they had the meat shop, the butcher shop, and they had everything. So it wasn't like a big supermarket, but these little shops where you did the produce, maybe it was in a little shop and all that. And we were walking down one morning, we was hunting some breakfast, and we run across this little shop that looked really nice. Nobody was there. Had some coffee. It was a coffee shop. So we go in there and sit down. They spoke German, we spoke English, and we tried to, finally we get to the point where we could order some coffee. We get our coffee, we're drinking it, and I see the lady in the back, back there, and the, bake, the lady is taking up homemade bread, and she is slathering that bread with something, and they're eating it, and they're just enjoying it. It's just so good to them, and I said, Toshi, I said, Toshi, I said, I gotta have some you of that. You thought it was like cream cheese? Man, it looked delicious, <laughs> and uh, so I went by there, and it, you can imagine the struggle we had back and forth, and finally, she sold me a jar of what she was using to lather that bread up with, and I was so excited. So just as soon as we got back, well, I went and bought some bread, some fresh bread at the bakery. Just as soon as we got back to the house where we were staying, what did I do? I got me some of that bread out and I just lathered that bread up. And I took me a big old bite of it. It was lard. It was lard. You ever try to eat lard on a piece of bread? Man, it was, it took me a while to get over that. But they was eating lard just mm -hmm. smeared on bread over there. Of course, if you've ever been to Germany, they love their bread. But anyhow, I've always thought that was mm. a funny story. I just, man, I, I just knew that you was going to be good. Gonna I just good. lathered it up very I thought it was some type of jelly or jam or it had to be something like that. It wasn't. It was hot lard, y'all. Yeah. Hot lard. Anyway, I remember my granddaddy. So we used to raise our own hogs uh -huh. and butcher them, mm -hmm. process them. And he had a big old black kettle. And he would cook this down. And mm -hmm. we, that's all we used growing right. up. Um, and then he would take, oh, I got cracklings from this too. He'd take the cracklings and then we'd have the pork skins and we would smoke the sausage. We would use every we part. We would fry fish in it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Chicken. Everything. Mm -hmm. Yep. So the hog lard, I'm excited about that because that's going to give us a, we spent a lot of money on grease. Mm -hmm. Oh, so that's going to give us a, uh, an opportunity there to use what we grew because our whole, we try and our whole endeavor is try to use more of what we grow. Be a little more sustainable. Sustainable. Speaking of that, <laughs> this is another one, folks. So well, let, let me let me start this story man, off. Man, man. So Greg's been having some shoulder issues. Um, he got an injection, been doing some therapy, and he's having trouble sleeping and resting at night. He's spent some of that is with age. Yeah, last couple of weeks in a recliner. So I did a tincture that's supposed to help you relax, calm down, and also aid in sleeping. Well, some folks are not aware of what tinctures are. Explain that to us. So them. I took some herbs, some lemon balm, passion flower, lavender, um, valerian root. And there's one more. There was about five different ones. Mixed it with some um, alcohol and let it sit for about six weeks. So the alcohol draws the herbs out and then you strain it and you end up with... Your own medicine, people. That's what we're making, <laughs> your own medicine here. And it works, don't it? So the theory here is every night before I go to bed, I take a little shot of this right here. A little, as she says, a swallow. Well, yeah. You're really supposed to use a medicine dropper, but I haven't got one yet. So I've been just taking a, 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 sip. a sip of this at night time. And I will tell you, because I did skip a couple of nights, and you'll explain why I skipped a couple of nights in just a minute here. But it, it does help. Mm -hmm. I mean, every night that I have took this, I rested better than when I didn't. And, and what you have to understand is, is this is set in a jar with all those flowers in it for weeks on our, on our counter up there. And then she strains it off and gets the pulp of all that off and this is what you end up with. The good stuff. It's got to be the most harmless thing you have ever drank <laughs> in your life. And that's the reason I skipped it for a couple of nights because I said to myself, 
I really don't need to do this unless I have to. But it does help. And I'm more, I'm more, I you don't fall asleep on the show. I do too. I'm more religiously <laughs> get back on it. But it's amazing to me that we can, you know, most of our medicine. I've got to get a medicine dropper because I think you might be taking too big of a sip. Really? Yeah. Okay. I really can't describe the taste of this right here, but if you ever tasted any of the old time medicines that had that bitter, strong, strange flavor to it, so it's made plus. with vodka. So you just oh, I didn't know the vodka. Yeah. The vodka is the base. Yeah. Which most of our medicines, liquid medicines, do have a and base of alcohol. Base, yeah. It's like um, cough syrup, maybe. Mm -hmm, yeah. Yeah. Any of those kind of things. So but now I did talk to Kaylee from Honeystead. Yep. And she, where I mixed all the herbs together, she said I should have done them separately, and then mixed strained them and mixed them to the end so you have the right proportions. I might have a little too much of something in there that tastes bad. If you ever could imagine what a root is supposed to taste like, <laughs> that's pretty much it right there. Okay, move on. Whew. Anyway, teachers, we're making our own medicine, folks. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's talk about strawberries, strawberries, strawberries. It's exciting strawberries. We got all the strawberries sent out. We got a few left to sell. We had a little uh, excess when we got through shipping all the orders out, so they they may be just a few left mm -hmm. on there, not many at all. So we're running real little inventory. Mm -hmm. But if you want some, we may have some, a few left. Otherwise, you've got your strawberries and you're ready to plant, or you're excited about planting strawberries next year. Either way, we're gonna give you some insight on growing strawberries. Now we will both admit, because you grew your strawberries last year and I grew my strawberries. I grew my strawberries on the flat in the regular garden. I grew mine in the raised bed. So we had two different experiences right and there. And you grew yours on plastic. I did mulch. Not plastic. It was like plastic. It was weed cloth. Weed cloth. Somebody had sent me a sample of some weed cloth. I used that. And I put drip tape underneath that. Mm -hmm. Now the one thing I will tell you, well let me tell you, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to get a little out of order here, but I'm going to go ahead and lay these two major hints out there. This is the two major struggles rural strawberries. Number one is weeds. Yeah. We had a lady come in, she got two or a hundred of them, and that was, she said they did really well last year, and she put down some uh, ground cover, but weeds took over. Mm -hmm. Yep. Weeds is number one. Number two is when those berries get ready is the birds. The birds. Got to keep the birds out of them so you can enjoy them. You go through all that trouble and then the birds You know what a lot of people told me to do is to paint some rocks paint a rock that looks like a strawberry and the bird's gonna peck on that rock and, and realize it's not a good strawberry. Right. Yeah. I'm yeah. gonna do that. Yep. Mm, okay. Strawberry rock. Strawberry rock. All right, let's get started. All right. What zones can you grow strawberries? As far as I know, you can grow strawberries in the fall plant like what we do, six through ten. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can grow them that. As far as five goes, I can't give you any recommendation on that because I don't know of anybody that lives or gardens in zone five that has overwintered strawberries. But I do know some people in zone six that's been really successful doing it. So zone six through ten, you can plant them in the fall just like we do. So zone six, you would plant early, in September? Early. It's early just October. the opposite as in the springtime. You would plant those in September, first of October, probably sometime in September. And the earlier in the fall because you got to get them established before the cold weather hits. So on seven? Seven, probably uh, mid October. October. Zone eight? October. Zone nine? Nine. I had somebody call earlier today from Florida. Nine and ten. I think y'all guys could, could easily shoot for November. I mean, if you put them in the ground now, you'll be okay, but you can plant all the way up in November and, and do great. Okay. What are the soil and fertilizer requirements? Okay, so the soil, you need to check your pH. Your pH needs between 6.0, 6.5, somewhere there about, don't stress if it's off just a mark or two. Somewhere there, which is where you normally want your vegetable garden anyway. You want to fertilize heavy up front with your strawberries. You want to give strawberries plenty of food. Most people don't understand or realize that they take a lot of fertilizer early on because you're trying to grow the root system of that plant before the cold weather gets on and before they start putting berries on. All right, excuse me, I got a little carried away there. You did. All right. So on our website, under Hodge University, we have the in, the strawberry growing guide, yep. 
which most of the information we go over tonight will be on there. So we have the in-ground strawberry fertilization schedule. Yep, and the in-ground and the raised bed is going to be similar, but a little different here. So with any, uh, most any of the crops, I recommend putting this complete organic matter one week, till it into your soil one week prior to planting. That's just a good strategy on just about anything. So you want to do that. If you got really good compost or you got good animal manure, any of those will work fine. Just put them in the soil, incorporate it in, and getting those microbes feeding on that and breaking it down about a week, 10 days before planting. Then, two weeks after planting, if you're using the Hoss fertilizer injector, you want to start putting something in there like a base, what a, uh, a well-rounded fertilizer like our 2020-20 fertilizer, and you want to add you some micro boost in there with it. And that fills out that fertility with all your minor and major elements in there with your good nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. Excuse me. Two to three, that tension was hitting me back again. <laughs> Two to three weeks after that, you want to hit them again and you want to alternate some calcium in there, something like some oh, calcium nitrate. Yep. Um, you want to give it some calcium there again, hit it again with your micro boost. And then you want to go back to the 20, 20, 20 and the micro boost after that. Uh, what's it say there? didn't say every two to three weeks. Mm -hmm. So according to how you weather raise, if it's warm weather, you can probably go with the two weeks. If it turns off cold, probably stretch it out to two weeks after that. Stop your fertilizing three, four weeks before harvest. When I start letting my berries sit on my plants, which for us is about the end of January, I like to back off my fertilizer thing at that point. So the raised bed is... Raised bed is a little bit different. It's a little bit simpler. A little bit simpler. All right. Uh, same thing, pre-plant. Same thing, pre-plant. You want to use the, well, you can use this right here, or you can also use the Dr. Joe's. Mm -hmm. If you if you don't have an injector, just use the Dr. Joe's and put it in a water can and let it uh, dissolve out. So that's pour. using MicroBoost and 20-20-20 in a watering can. Yep, yep. Yeah, and then do the same thing two to three weeks after that, and then same thing, discontinue your feeding three to four weeks before harvest. You guys are using these vertical planters such as green stalk, it's the same thing here. You just want to mix in some of that liquid fertilizer every two to three weeks. Always put you some micro boost in there. Okay. So, next is how to plant. How to plant. So, we mentioned weeds was a problem, so we always want to use mulch and if preferably drip irrigation. Now, it's not detrimental to use drip irrigation like it is on some of your summer crops because we will get a certain amount of rainfall in these cooler months. So it's not as important, but we always like to use, you didn't use drip irrigation in your raised mm -hmm. beds last year, but I did use drip irrigation on my in-ground. And it was helpful because I could inject my fertilizer to it and I could water when it, when it got dry. Mm -hmm. So strawberries do not like what we call wet feet. So if you've got a low area that you're planting in, you may want to crown them up a little bit more than normal. But for the most part, you want to plant just like this right here shows. You want to plant so that your crown is exposed there, not too deep and not too shallow. The only difference would be if you got a place that stays wet, you may want to plant them on more of a little bed or more of a little hill, kind of what this is showing right here. And a little side note here, you see that runner that's coming off there mm -hmm. with the daughter plant? Did you know you could clip that runner once that daughter plant starts and you could actually have you another plant there? I think I did some of that mm -hmm. last year, not intentionally, mm -hmm. but... That's the way a lot of people propagate their strawberries is by clipping off that runner and getting that daughter plant out of there. Cool. In ground plant, the way I did it, Three feet spacing works pretty doggone good. And I planted on an ever emitter, which was over 12 inches. But 12 to 18 inches in ground planting is going to be pretty much right. Raised beds. On raised beds, normally raised beds are four foot wide. So plant two rows of these things down so they're two feet apart is perfect. Mm -hmm. There again, plant them on 12 yeah. inches. And a raised bed is not as important to plant them up on the a little mound or a little bed because normally raised they beds dry, out, dry out, out and they drain good. But you may run into that problem if you're planting on that. Do you want to plant those now? Yeah, in a, uh, a spot that stays a little bit. And you know what? 
if you got a spot that stays a little bit in a higher spot, I would pick the higher spot for my strawberries. Save that lower spot for something that you're going to grow in springtime. So a few tips and tricks mm -hmm. while you're going <coughs> to get that out for us is they love the sun, so they need at least 8 to 10 hours a day. Yep. Okay, so what we have here for you folks that don't have an area where you don't want to plant a lot of, a lot of strawberries, but you want to plant some because you want to enjoy that, you can use a root pouch just like we have here. What is this, 15 gallon? Mm -hmm. This is a 15 gallon root pouch. Mm -hmm. And we filled it with potting soil. Any good potting soil will do. You don't necessarily need yeah, a different. seed starting mix, but any good potting soil will work there. And these things work really good. And one reason they work so well is they breathe mm -hmm. out of here. And they drain well. Yep. So the first thing I would do if I'm planting on any kind of container is I want to mix in my complete organic right here. Mm -hmm. Mix this in a few days. Preferably, I'll have to open my bag here. We ain't got no measuring cup. There are instructions on here about how much to put out there. But you basically just want to kind of sprinkle it out there. See if I can get this right. That looks good. Yeah, that looks good. Mm -hmm. And the main thing is kind of just mix it in. You don't want to leave it on top there. You just want to mix it in really good. And yeah, if you can do this a few days ahead of time, it's fine. If you have to do it at the moment, hey, don't stress over it. It'll be okay. It does help break it down a little bit quicker if you do it in advance. All right, so here's the strawberries that we have. Look at those nice plugs there. And so we what would be the crown? The crown's right here. You can see the crown mm -hmm. right there? That's okay. the crown. And I'm going to plant these things about six inches apart. So I'm going to go around outside first. Just dip a little, little hole in there, plant them like that. Hang on to me if you would. How many do you think we should get in here, Mama Hoss? About six. Six? I'm going to say we're going to get a few more than that. I'm going around the outside edge first. That's well. Got a good perimeter going around there. One more on that. You ain't gonna be bad off. I think I would just put one in the middle. That's what I'm gonna do. Yep. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, you just had to. I had to do it. Yeah. So we got seven plants, which is ideal. I'm gonna see if I can lift this up right here. Seven plants, ideal for a 15 gallon fruit pouch. So you'd water it in really well? Yep. Water it in really well, then take your watering can with your Dr. Joe's about every two to three weeks. Water them. Set it in full sun. Set it in full sun. If you live up north and you're really concerned about the cold, cold weather, the neat thing about this is with these handles, you can pick it up and move it inside. Mm -hmm. Now, that hand where we live, we don't have to worry about it because it's not mm -hmm. going to get that cold. But if you did live in an area where it got cold or we had one of those freakish years mm -hmm. where we had one of those hard freezes, yeah, Pit it, and I inside. talked to one of our customers this week. Um, she had problems with deer eating hers, so I talked her into getting some of those root pouches yeah. and putting them beside her patio. Yep, yep. That way at night when deer feed sometimes, she could move them in mm -hmm. if she wanted to. Yeah. All right. Uh, strawberry pest and disease. Whoa, where are we at here? On the front page. We hadn't moved. We had front page. Yeah, some of the uh, some of the pests uh, are plant bugs, such as stink bugs, slugs, of course, can be an issue, especially when it gets wet and damp. Uh, birds are probably the biggest thing. We talked about yeah. birds when they get... A pest is anything that bothers... A lot of what we think about insects, but birds can also be a pest, especially when they start eating our good strawberries there. Mm -hmm. So there's not a lot of insect problems. Mites can be an issue in the springtime, you know, when it starts getting hotter. It can be an issue. But most of the time during growing over the wintertime, like we, do, we don't have very little insect pressure at all. Mm -hmm. You do have a little bit of problem with uh, diseases such as crown rot. And that's the reason we like to not let them have wet feet and maybe grow them on a little bit of a bed if you're growing them in the ground. And you can have a few more root diseases out there, but for the most part in the home garden, you don't have much problems if you take the precautions ahead of time not to plant them in a low area. Don't 
Don't overwater. And don't overwater. Yep. Okay. Leaf blight sometimes is an issue. If you find it is, we've got a product called Fungamax that would work pretty good on that. Mm -hmm. yep. Um, so you let them grow, you let the runners run, you, well, whoa, 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 no, actually, let me back whoa, whoa, whoa. up. Back up. Zoop. Zoop. You pinch the runners off. Pinch the runners off. So this is what's going to keep you making great big, big strawberries. strawberries. And if you don't do what we're telling you, you're going to make a lot of strawberries, but they're going to be small strawberries. And we want to make big strawberries. Okay. Pinch the runners off, pinch the blooms off until around the 10th of January. Now, I could tell you that I've been doing this for years and years and years, but the fact of the matter is my buddy Jimbo out of Texas, which has been growing strawberries longer than I have, gave me this great information, and we tried it a few years ago, and mm -hmm. it worked it wonderful. Work. So thanks, Jimbo, for the strawberry tips. Pinch the blooms off, pinch the strawberries, runners off, and you start letting them set fruit in January. In about 30 or 45 days, they're going to be setting fruit at that time they're going to start flowering set fruit and then you're going to be start making those big wonderful sweet strawberries do that's you, probably the biggest tip we do have do you let them get really red for you to pick them or can you pick them when they're you can pick them a little bit but i prefer to let them get ripe. what's your thoughts on that um well last year i tend to try to get them before the birds did. yeah i know that's that can be an issue they so, to me they it's like a tomato yeah. If they ripen on the vine, they seem to be a little sweeter. Yeah. Okay, last thing. Bare root versus... Plants. Okay, so you'll see a lot of nurseries out there, and we struggled with this when we started putting our price on the website because we didn't want to seem like we were gouging people. A lot of companies out there sell strawberry plants bare root. And they are a lot cheaper to buy bare root than they are as plugs. We sell ours as plugs. Bare root, if they're fresh they do fine and normally speaking bare roots are a lot cheaper than the plugs are you can buy a lot more for the same amount of money than you can with the plugs the problem we have is having to ship them is their they, their lifespan is not as long so if you're at a local location where they dig them right then you can get your hands on them and plant them they'll be doing wonderful but if they have to be dug and held for a few days and maybe they have a long shipping transit time they'll get looking rough and yeah. that can be where you talk about uh, some of the first ones we sent out um that were had a few brown leaves mm -hmm. they went through some shipping shock yeah shipping shocks shipping shock and they was looking a little rough the thing about it is I had a customer call and complain i said let me tell you something put them out there let them have some sunshine let them have some air water 24 hours they turn around they look great again mm -hmm. so you they will look a little ragged sometimes when they come in shipping but they'll straighten up it's amazing how quick they'll turn around yeah. plugs bins that we mail them out we think is the way to go bare roots do great in certain situations i personally don't like a bare root as far as a mail order type thing okay. mulch 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 uh i prefer to use something that we really have you used straw mm -hmm. in yours last year to work wonderful it's an organic matter it kind of breaks down i've used some woven stuff i'm using some woven stuff right now on some strawberries so we're doing tests all the time uh you definitely want to mulch your strawberries that's one thing that you want to do is mulch them yeah the lady that was complaining about the weeds last week i said did you mulch and she's like no i said try mulching mulch will help with disease too a little bit of course it helps with moisture retention mm -hmm. underneath there so mulch, 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 uh, an organic, readily available mulch, pine straw, wheat straw, hay, anything like that. It's probably the best thing. If you have to use some of these woven fabrics, they work, as, you know, I ain't gonna say quite as good, but they work fine too. Okay. Certainly better than nothing. All right, there you have it. There you have it, folks. Strawberries, all excited. So if we miss something, you can cover something, or you have some tips and tricks, put it in the comments below. Yep, we got Garden of the Week. Garden of the Week is Carlin Porter, Eddieville, Kentucky, Zone 6. And the porters are growing broccoli, kale, and lettuce. I'm going to show some of these pictures here. Looks like a pumpkin that they got there. I'm not sure what kind of pumpkin it is, but that's some nice pumpkins. I can just imagine in Kentucky what great pumpkins you could grow. Oh, yeah. And, of course, they got their corn growing right there. Yep. And they got some broccoli. I brought the starting mate. Look at their broccoli. I know. I started to pick one earlier and yep. bring it in. And of course, as with any garden, you need to be growing a sunflower or two to brighten your day. 
And where are they at, did you say? Kentucky? Eddieville, Kentucky. Carlin Porter out of Eddieville, Kentucky, Zone 6. Whoa, Thank sick. you for sending in your pictures for your garden. Absolutely wonderful. We love our Kentucky folks. Mm -hmm. Old goat. Old goat. Old goat. So the old goat's on the set somewhere. And if you find the old goat. I don't think he's hiding today. He may not be, but he's on the set. He is on the set. He's on the set. He may be out there. Put your uh, comments below and we will draw a name to find out who gets the old goat prize. And we'll send you coveted horse merchandise. And <laughs> Tater Mater 828. Tater Mater. Tater Mater 828. Send us in your shipping address to custserve at hosstools.com and we'll send you a coveted, coveted hoss merchandise or gift. All right. Corny joke. Corny joke. I've been waiting all week on this corny joke. You didn't read the notes? I did not. Mm -hmm. I didn't read that note. Okay. Why did the strawberry go out with the fig? Why did the strawberry go out with the fig? Because he couldn't find a date. Ha <laughs> ha, I'm pretty good at it. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> couldn't find a date. All right. Thank y'all folks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Are we out of garlic? We got a little bit of garlic. Oh, we got onions too. We got a little bit of elephant garlic left. Just a handful of strawberry plugs left. And then onions. Onions, onions. are pre-sale folks. Get your order in for your abide day, your short day onions. If you don't know that you can grow them, go to our website, look up our onion growing guide or onion product guide. We got a page there showing what onion you need for where you live. Onions. And next week we've got a special guest. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Peter. Teaser. We got Peter from uh, Simonis coming mm -hmm. in here. Yep. All right, folks. Thank you for joining us. Now it's time for you to get off that couch and what? Get dirty. Get dirty. <laughs>